Well, welcome to the NZ Travel Show, an interactive show where you can ask your NZ travel questions to the experts behind nzpocketguide.com, New Zealand's largest travel guide. The NZ Travel Show will start in exactly two minutes. Just the time for you to hit the like button, ring the notification bell, and subscribe if you have not done so yet. NZPocketGuide.com has over 3,000 articles covering all aspects of travelling in New Zealand, from a working holiday gap year to tips for a perfect family holiday. The site also features dozens of pre-made itineraries that you can use to plan your ideal trip in New Zealand. It's all available for free at nzpocketguide.com, so check it out. The NZ Travel Show is hosted by Robin, the Operations Manager of South Pacific Pocket Guide, the company behind nzpocketguide.com. The New Zealand Travel Show is also hosted by Laura, a journalist and editor-in-chief of South Pacific Pocket Guide and all its publications, including nzpocketguide.com. We're exactly one minute away from the NZ Travel Show. Get yourself comfortable and start asking your NZ Travel questions in the chat. Robin and Laura will go over them when the show starts. In 30 seconds, our experts will be live from New Zealand to give you all the practical New Zealand travel tips you need. From the best transport options to the best accommodations and activities to choose for the perfect New Zealand holiday. Live from New Zealand, this is the NZ Travel Show with your travel experts, Robin and Laura. Hey, we go. We're back. Well, are we that's, back? That's kind of fun. <laughs> well, that's that's a fantastically oh, smooth man. start, isn't it? How oh. annoying. Anyway, hey. Hey, let's start again, shall we? Welcome everybody <laughs> to the NZ Travel Show. It is Sunday, the twelfth of February. It's eight a.m. right here in New Zealand, and we're here to answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. Fun times. Yeah. I mean, honestly, what what a great professional start we had for you today. <laughs> 
Oh, that was annoying. Anyway, okay, lots of comments today. So that's that's pretty good. What's Malcolm having to say? Malcolm says, question about the police clearance certificate PCC while applying for a New Zealand visa. I need to submit my PCC. I have worked in the USA for 10 years and have a PS- PCC from July 2022. I exited the US in February 2022. All right, so Malcolm, there is a law in New Zealand that states that if we are not registered immigration advisor, we don't have the right legally to give you any advice about immigrating in New Zealand. So for that reason, sadly, we won't be able to answer specific immigration New Zealand questions. However, if you go on immigration.govt.nz, which is the official immigration New Zealand website, um, you'll be able to contact Tag them right away and they'll be able to answer your question. Okay, so uh, we have Anthony and Fabio that were discussing flight prices. If you guys are interested, check out uh, the um, the live chat right now. Um, they were just chatting about the different time to buy a flight and uh, what ended up being the cheapest for them. And very exciting, Fabio bought his plane ch- tickets to New Zealand. So Finally, yeah, happy time. it's been yeah. a long time of assessing those yeah. prices. Uh, Sherry is here and uh, saying good morning, guys. Morena, Laura, Robin and everyone. How's everyone in going? Say Lawrence, how is it going? It's going awesome, except for a few, you know, audio problems this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, otherwise, we're, I guess, pretty awake, pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that that kind of give you a jolt that nothing is working. That, yeah. That's <laughs> Adil says, Kia ora, uh, Robin, Laura, and all the viewer, fun times. Uh, and Shang Sunny was also telling us the microphone was not on. So here you go. Well, everybody, uh, to be fair, everybody was saying that the microphone wasn't on. So yeah, you guys are absolutely awesome. Keeping us on uh, on track, you know. I have a little uh, stuff that tells me the microphone is on, but it's like really hidden behind a million cables over there. <laughs> Maybe I should bring that up. I-, I will work on something. Yeah, but thanks guys for uh, yes. letting us know that pretty promptly so we could yeah. solve that. And Nathan Bay is in here saying, Morena, everyone, oh, is everything. We're doing pretty well, Nathan. Just obviously bracing for that, uh, this big amount of rain coming up real soon. Okay, so aside from all the technical difficulties that we are having, today we are having a bit of a theme for this live show. All right, so the theme for this live show today is the New Zealand glaciers. Uh, Mm -hmm. It is obviously an activity that a lot of people coming to travel in New Zealand have on their itinerary. It's kind of a must-do when traveling especially on the south end of New Zealand. So we thought we'd cover a little bit uh, of information about all the different glaciers which are available to you as a tourist to visit, a few tips, a few tricks, answering a few common questions and all that good thing. But in order to begin talking about the New Zealand glacier, we thought it'd be interesting to tell you which are the glaciers that you are likely to be able to experience in New Zealand. So let's get started with... Ta-da-da-da! The map! All right. So the first glacier and probably the most popular glacier in New Zealand that you'll be able to visit as a tourist is Franz Josef Glacier. It's located on the west coast of New Zealand. It's pretty much on the one road that everybody has to drive through when uh, when making their way around the south island of New Zealand. Uh, it is the, by, by far the most popular glacier. So there, there is a lot of facilities. There is multiple tour companies, plenty of accommodation and all that good thing. The next glacier that you are very likely to be able to visit in New Zealand when traveling is Fox Glacier. It's located south of Franz Josef Glacier. It's really only a short drive. Uh, It's about like 30 minutes, would you say, Laura? About 30 minutes? 20! 20 minutes, 20 she says. So yes, it's only a 20 minute drive there and it is uh, is just a a different glacier than Franz Josef Glacier. So if the weather is not good in Franz Josef, maybe you can head to Fox Glacier and be able to do your experience nonetheless. If you want something a little bit more intimate it's definitely much more of a smaller settlement um, uh, that you can do plus if you are really into those beautiful ice blue ice caves um you know, this, uh, the, the, this pure glacier experience. Well, the Fox Glacier has a really big band in it. And with that big band, usually comes a lot of more broken ice and therefore usually a little bit more ice caves. So you are, you are almost 100% guaranteed to get ice cave when visiting Fox Glacier. So here you go. Hey, Clay, that's been a while. What's up with you? 
Uh, yeah, Clay just popped in the live chat right now. Okay, and the last glacier that you are uh, likely to be able to encounter in New Zealand is the Tasman Glacier, which is located in the Mount Cook area. So the Tasman Glacier is um, is on the other side of the Southern Alps. So all the other glaciers I just mentioned, France and Fox Glacier, are located on the west uh, coast of the Southern Alps, therefore being usually battered with weather. The wide west coast is usually very famous for its weather. Now, the the um, Tasman Glacier is located basically on the east side, so basically sheltered behind the Southern Alps and much more inland. So it's not as uh, it's not as um, you know wild of a weather on the Tasman Glacier, and usually much more of a reliable glacier. Plus, the Tasman Glacier is located just below Mount Cook, New Zealand's tallest mountain, and it is New Zealand's longest glacier. So here you go; those are your three different options if you are planning to travel in New Zealand and want to experience the different glaciers that the country have to offer. So pick any or all of the three. I don't think I will do both France and, and Fox Glacier, to be quite honest. I'll do one or. Yeah. Um, so either or. But that's those are the options that you guys have. Yeah. Macho X is here as well, saying Morena. Laura, what does Morena mean? It means good morning in the Maori language of New Zealand. Okay, so uh, while you guys are preparing your questions about traveling in New Zealand, again, you can ask us about any uh, anything to do with traveling in New Zealand, not just the glacier. We're going to keep talking about the awesome glacier. And uh, we thought we'd start with the different ways... Ah. Uh, Ways, ways you can take on the glaciers in New Zealand. Because, you know, if you're not the adventurous kind of guy, you can still take on the glaciers of New Zealand pretty easily. Uh, what is Clay saying? Uh, Clay says, it's summer is the short answer. <laughs> Been busy the last few weeks making hay while Ooh. the sun shines. Oh, that's very old school. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can see him with the sickle, scythe, the, yeah. the scythe. I can see you with the scythe uh, making your old school clay. Yeah. Uh, so your old school hay clay. <laughs> hay clay. Hay clay. Hay. All right, so let's go over the different ways we can take on the glacier with kind of uh, the first and Laura's favorite uh, things to do on yeah. the glaciers. Yeah, so the first thing you can do is you can certainly hike around the glaciers. So there are many walking trails to the various glaciers around New Zealand where you can walk uh, sort of in the valleys. You can even walk on the mountains alongside the glaciers or at least where there's a viewpoint of the glaciers in the distance. Um, there's plenty of options to do that both in Franz Josef, Fox Glacier, Mount Cook, also glaciers near uh, Wanaka like the Rob Roy Glacier. So plenty of options to do that. That. Next up is hiking on top of New Zealand's glaciers. So I'm sure most people know the glaciers in New Zealand because you can do heli hikes onto them and you can do that both in Franz Josef, Fox Glacier and on the Tasman Glacier in Mount Cook. Next up is kayaking on the glacial lakes. So a really cool aspect of the glaciers is actually the formations and uh, landmarks that have been left in the wake of the glaciers retreating, particularly um, Lake Maparika in Franz Josef, where you can do kayaking tours there. And you can even do kayaking tours in summer at Mount Cook around the, the icebergs that the glacier has left behind. And if you are planning on researching which company to do a glacial mm -hmm. lake kayaking tour with, uh, we're recommending Franz Josef Wilderness Tours. We know them, we have featured them in some of our videos and they're pretty awesome places. Uh, I mean, pretty awesome people to take you to pretty special places. Um, another thing you can do for the glaciers is hiking below the glaciers. So there are quite a few hikes, especially uh, the Franz Josef Glacier has a valley, uh, glacier valley hike where you can basically go in the valley following the streams and uh, all the amazing water, see all the amazing waterfalls and formations that are left behind literally in the valley of the glacier. Um, in uh, in Fox Glacier, there's the uh, Mount Fox route, which you can do similar to that. And then there's the Tasman Glacier hike also in Mount Cook. Another another one you can do, another way to experience the glaciers is to fly above the glaciers. So there's helicopter tours, plane tours, even skydiving, where you can get views of the glaciers from above. And uh, yeah, that's another really awesome and special way to experience the glaciers. 
Um, another really uh, interesting thing to do is to ski down the glaciers. So especially over in on the Tasman Glacier during winter, you can do um, heli skiing. So you can be dropped off by ski plane or by helicopter and then do um, skiing or snowboarding down the glacier. Um, obviously quite an expensive activity, but a really uh, unique way to experience the glaciers. So Laura, out of all of those different ways to experience the glacier, what's your favorite? I have to say the glacier heli hike is pretty special. Getting to go on the glacier, go into the ice caves, and it just feels like a really cool sort of adventurous activity. Also, the helicopter tour in there, so you get to experience the glacier from above, a very short scenic flight to get there. Um, it, it, it's kind of a, a complete package that I really think is a, a special experience. Okay, so we have Jane DeVries in the chat saying, Hi guys, do you have any recommendation of things to do during the day on Great Bay Island? Uh, we have a night sky tour booked for the night. All right, so we'll stop talking about the glaciers yeah. a little bit. And uh, Laura, our resident Great Bay expert, <laughs> will uh, tell you a few things. So first up, how did you, how was your, um, you know, your... You're commuting to Great Bay Island, though, and you went yeah. there. Was it fun? <laughs> uh, well, I took a boat over. It wasn't really. It wasn't any of the commercial ferries or anything. I actually took a Department of Conservation boat over to Great Bay Island from um, from Auckland, and oh, that was that was a very sicky. Uh, so you mean a, a, a winter uh, in the waves, uh, a, a small uh, you yeah. know journey on small a small dinghy? Vessel, that yeah, work for you? no, that wasn't great. But um, <laughs> anyway, funny story aside, uh, Laura, it, what's what's there to do in, uh, in Great Barrier? It Island? really depends on where you're going to be basing yourself when you're over there in Great Barrier Island. But no matter where you are, it depends on how good your hiking boots are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of walks to do. Um, so taking the Altier track, this might be this is a, a multi-day track, but you don't have to do the whole thing you can do the um hike from the uh, one end of the trail which starts within driving distance of the main town on great barrier island where the airport is you can take um you can take a shuttle or a taxi over to the start of the trail and from there you can hike to uh, some really cool hot springs so make sure that you take your swimwear there and you can relax in some hot springs and um, part way along the trail so that's a good place to sort of stop relax and then turn back from there there's also some sort of mining relics on that part of the trail as well or if you're a super you know super um fit and can do hiking for a long time then you can actually go up into the mountains to um to this really gorgeous um hut with beautiful views and then go back down from the bottom from there we do have articles on nzpocketguide.com which lists the best hikes and best walks on great barrier island so you can check out which um hiking trails would be best from where you're going to be located yourselves um also beautiful beaches on great barrier island so just basically exploring the beaches and lapping up those views on a place that there's not going to be that many people around um is also a really special experience and there's a lot of wildlife on great barrier island so I, I would say if i can give you a tip if you if you're deciding to do any length of hike on great barrier island it's relatively remote right so there's really a lot of wildlife is to go slowly stay quiet and sometimes backtrack a little bit and you'll be able to see that a lot of wildlife a lot of birds basically are quite attracted by the soil that you have upturned with your hiking boots so if you kind of just walk a little bit and then sometimes you know like, let's say you're taking your lunch break and everything just walk back a little bit and you may see like a few birds kind of coming amongst the track and you'll be able to see a lot of really cool wildlife yeah Okay, uh, well, yes, yeah, so keep going with your questions. Remember, we have now we have over a 30 seconds delay, and there's kind of no way for us to kind of catch that back. So, fun times, but yeah, so we have about 30 seconds delay. So, you know, be patient with us when you ask the question, but we always go over all the questions that we receive. Okay, so again, the theme of this week is French Joseph Glacier. So, we're here to, um, so the, the theme of this week is different glaciers. So, we are going to be starting with French Joseph Glacier and kind of go over some of the most common questions that we usually receive about French Joseph Glacier as well as uh, as well as go over a couple of uh, things that we really like to do specifically in French Joseph Glacier and then we'll go to uh, Fox Glacier and then we'll do the same thing with Tasman Glacier so uh, Sherry is asking about how long are the hikes at French Joseph and Fox Glacier and which one do you guys prefer? I'm looking for things to do in those areas. So you have a huge amount of hikes to choose from in both those areas by the way so like 
really just go for what you think is like, you know, the amount of time you want to spend outside, uh, maybe the views that you want to go for. We do have articles on nzpocketguide.com, which is the 10 best hikes in Franz Josef and the 10 best hikes in, Fra uh, in Fox Glacier, sorry. So really just have a look at that and pick the ones that you know, like I say, be best time frame for you, the best yeah. uh, scenic views you want to get. Because the hike will range from like, you know, you can get to a viewpoint in Litia by an hour, but then you have some hikes that will take you seven, eight, nine hours, right? Yeah. So you really have like a little bit of everything right here, um, you know, when it comes to the breadth of like things that there is to do. Now, which one uh, do you guys prefer? Um, I mean, I think my favorite glacier is the Fox Glacier. I think if I have to pick one of them, uh, just because, just also like, it, it's just smaller, it's more intimate. Like, you know, anyway, you do a tour, you're in a helicopter and, you know, it's a small helicopter anyway, you know, you're, it's always relatively intimate. But on the glacier, you also don't have like the going back and forth and back and forth of a helicopter. So yeah, you feel like stranded alone on the Fox Glacier. So I do really like that. Which yeah. one would be your favorite? Um, so in terms of helicopter tours and that sort of thing, Fox Glacier is my preference. But in terms of hiking, there's actually some better hikes I feel now at Franz Joseph Glacier because some of the really good hiking trails at the Fox Glacier have closed down um, over the years. So Fran Franz Joseph Glacier tends to have better hiking trails to do around that area. So you prefer Franz Joseph over Tasman? Wow, amazing. In terms of hiking trails, yes. Okay, wow. Yeah. Not the Hooker Valley track, though. Um, uh, no, I think okay. I prefer Franz Joseph. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Nice. Okay. Um, cool, cool. Robert is here as well, saying that he spent 10 days in the South and he, spent, he had great times, great people. Nice. He also spent four days in Hahe, Ooh. which is not on the South and he says he's yeah. quite nice. And he's currently in Toranga right now, anticipating Cyclone Gabriel. Ooh. He says he guess going to take the good with the bad. Yeah, we uh, we we took the time yesterday to tie up our trees and uh, get ourselves ready for um for that. Uh, Clay says I know I've probably asked this one before, but do you guys know if they are looking at opening the Fox Walk again? Yeah, well, last time I checked, they were like, we have no, uh, like, the you know, the notice on the on the Department of Conservation website was like, we have no time scale for when this yep. is going to reopen. I think they kind of... It's budget-wise, mate. Yeah. It costs so much money to kind of redo that, so I, I don't think... I think they know that. that that road going on that side of the valley, they know it's prone to a lot of damage, so perhaps they're rethinking... Is it, obviously, I have no idea of what the budget will be, but, yeah. you know, consider, like, you know, it's a few hundred thousand dollars, right, um, to kind of, like, uh, we, we, we do that, that road, and you know that literally pretty much every year, because it, it has been happening pretty much every year, right, you know, you're a Kiwi, so you do know that, uh, if every year you've got to respend that money to maintain that road, is it really worth the investment? So, yeah, I think it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a tough one. So, they, they say there's no time scale on that, so I think it's... Yeah, I think it's pretty telling on, you know, I don't know if that's going to reopen anytime soon. All right. So let's talk about beautiful Franz Joseph Glacier. And let's go over some of the most uh, common questions that we usually receive, um, you know, about Franz Joseph Glacier. So let's get started with one question that we get really, really, really often. And is it worth actually visiting Franz Joseph Glacier, which, spoiler alert, is uh, Laura's favorite glacier? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think it's absolutely worth uh, visiting Franz Josef Glacier for sure. Um, any one of the glaciers, to be fair, is is amazing to see. So I think you should always always weigh up the what is available at Franz Josef, Fox Glacier and the Tasman Glacier in Mount Cook. All right, so can you walk easily on the Franz Josef Glacier, especially if you do not have any hiking or ice climbing experience? Uh, so you can't just, uh, you know, walk onto the glacier yourself, but you can take helicopter tours, which will either take you on glacier heli hiking tours, which gets you sort of uh, in the ice caves, those sort of things. But there's also the option to take helicopter tours right onto the top of the glacier on the neve and just sort of walking in the snowy part of the glacier as well. So you have several options when it comes to actually being able to walk on the Franz Josef Glacier. Now, the controversial questions that we kind of already answered a little bit is, which glacier is better, Franz or Fox Joseph Glacier? Fox Joseph. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <Franz>. so, <laughs> which is better, Fox or Franz Joseph? Uh, well, um, 
So Fox Glacier is what we found in our experience and what we've heard also from other people's experiences as well, that there tends to be more ice caves in Fox Glacier because of that sort of bend in the valley, which creates more of those um, those ice caves to explore. Also, Fox Glacier is has less tours going on top of it, so it's less of those helicopter sounds and stuff like that while you're doing your tour compared to Franz Joseph Glacier. However, Franz Joseph Glacier has more departures, more options to get on the glacier, so really depends on your itinerary, what you can fit in. Also, budget as well. The Franz Joseph Glacier heli hikes are a little bit cheaper than going on to Fox Glacier. Now, how many days would you need in Franz Joseph Glacier? So in Franz Joseph Glacier, we definitely recommend having uh, just leaving at least a couple of days, like a couple of full days in in the area because uh, if you are planning on doing any outdoor activities, any heli hiking, or even just doing the ha um, walking hikes and you want to be able to, you know, experience them in semi-decent weather, then, well, the weather is very changeable on the West Coast. It is very renowned for its heavy rain, which can um, cancel a lot of flights, that sort of thing. So if you are planning on doing any of those activities, at least give yourselves a couple of days in the area. Okay, so now the next one is going to require you to move. Can you show us again where is Francis Def located? Okay. Um, um, so Laura is making her way over there. Okay, so for, where is Franz Joseph, Laura? So Franz Joseph is located on the west coast of the South Island and it is located partially down here. So um, ooh, around this, this area here. All right. So while Laura is coming back, I'm going to uh, talk about how to get to Franz Joseph Glacier. So to get to Franz Joseph Glacier, uh, it's pretty easy. You just have to be on the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand. And at that point, it's literally right on the main road. Now, that said, if you're coming to New Zealand and you specifically want to see the Franz Joseph Glacier yourself, um, well, you know, you, you've got to make your way to that state Highway 6, which is kind of like this, this road on the west coast. Um, so the closest international airport will be the Christchurch airport which still is going to be about four hours and 40 minute drive away from Franz Joseph Glacier. If you want to take a domestic flight if you can kind of link those one together you can go to the Hokitika airport which still is going to be an hour and 40 minute drive um, away from Franz Joseph Glaciers and they are connecting flight domestic flight from Queenstown and Christchurch. So you can do Queenstown to Hokitika or Christchurch to Hokitika and then drive from there. There is obviously a train, the beautiful Transalpine, running from Christchurch to Greymouth, and then therefore Greymouth from Greymouth. So you can drive two hours and fifteen minutes and make your way to French Joseph Glacier. Plus, pretty much all main bus routes will link to French Joseph Glacier at some point if you're traveling around the South Island of New Zealand. So as you can see, French Joseph is relatively um, isolated, and so for that reason, uh, you'll be able to, you know, you'll you'll be more advised to kind of add French Joseph Glacier to a south and an itinerary rather than doing it on its own all right so the next question i have for uh, laura is what is the weather like usually on the very wild franz joseph glacier <laughs> okay starting with the temperature the daily average in franz joseph is 11.5 degrees celsius so that's 52.8 degrees fahrenheit while the yearly average rainfall is wait for it three thousand 987 millimeters that's 157 inches and that's the yearly average um rainfall in franz joseph and that's one of the wettest climates in new zealand so yeah a lot of rain <laughs> all right <laughs> Okay, so that is like the most common kind of questions that we usually receive about a French Joseph Glacier. But uh, yeah, Sherry has a question. How much of the glacier can you actually see from the hike? Quite a lot. Like the, pretty much like the whole glacier in the valley. So, um, I mean, you're not getting very close to it. You're not getting like right up like... Your nose is right. not touching the You're not, you're not, touching, the, not <laughs> touching the ice or anything, but... Which would be really dangerous, so don't do that as the glacier kind of goes to the end and starts melting, right? It's, so big yeah, chunks of ice are Yeah, it's actually very happening. dangerous to get so close to it. So don't go close to the face of the glacier. Just, just make it super clear. Don't, even if you find a way to make your way there, <laughs> don't. Yeah. But um, you get the full you get the full view. You know you can take photos and see the full view of the glacier, like the sort of the bottom of the glacier really well. Obviously the glacier goes up into the mountains, and at that point you can't see it anymore. It's under snow. But 
uh, yeah, as much as I think is is satisfactory. <laughs> yes. And if you were talking about uh, how much of the glacier can you see from the heli hike, you know, maybe you shorten it by hike. Um, so if you were asking about the heli hike, well, one of the great thing is that you actually are flying in, right? So during the flight game there, you get to see the whole valley and you get to see the whole glacier as you land on there. Now, once you're on top of the glacier, well, you don't really see as much, usually between a lot of like big ice blocks and then ice walls and all that. So you don't really see from the glacier, you don't really see the scale of the glacier, aside from uh, the Tasman Glacier. If you're on the Tasman Glacier, then you genuinely do see the whole scale of the glacier when you're there, because it's a little flatter as it is the, the longest one. You really feel the giganticness of it. But um, yeah, it is kind of an eerie experience to walk on the glacier because it's such a, a very different kind of landscape. You don't really even understand distances as mm. much. And it, it's kind of like, it's really offsetting, uh, off-putting, but I really, really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so you get to see the whole breadth of the glacier during the heli hike while doing the flight, then you get to kind of crawl around and see a lot of places in the glacier and everything, which is fun. And then you get to see the whole valley on the way back out, basically. That's kind of like what the experience will be to do the heli hike. So you still get a good understanding about the whole size yeah. of the glacier. I remember, guys, we do have videos of us doing heli hikes at Franz Joseph, Fox Glacier and the Tasman Glacier Lucky on, people we are. on this channel. So you can actually see what the experience is like in each and compare and make your own judgments from there. All right. OK, so while you guys keep going with uh, questions about traveling in New Zealand, obviously, we're going to keep going with French Joseph Glacier. Last little segment about the beautiful French Joseph Glacier. Laura and I are going to share our top, our favorite experience uh, to do on the French Joseph Glacier. And what about you start? OK, well, one thing you can do is absolutely free. You can go and do some uh, you can do some hikes. But specifically, a really good one is the Franz Joseph Glacier Terminal Face Hike, where you get to walk through the Glacier Valley in the wake of the Franz Joseph Glacier. Yes, and you get to see the terminal face. Yes. Uh, all right, so uh, my uh, favorite thing to do there is obviously the heli hike. I had to take the obvious one right here. Um, the heli hike is a complete experience where you get to see both the glacier, you get to walk on it, you get to experience it, and you get to see the whole valley on the walk on, on the fly back. It's obviously an experience that, you know, kind of sometimes, uh, you know, is extremely weather dependent, sometimes all the time. Uh, so yeah, so you've got to be a bit flexible with it uh, you know, but we'll cover that a little bit later. But it's definitely something that is absolutely worth doing if you have the budget for it, because it's not cheap. Yeah, um, another activity which you can do for absolutely free and it's one of the underrated activities is walking through the amazing wetland environment of the Ocarito Lagoon, home to some very, very rare birds. If you see a white heron there, you mean that is the that is it. You've, you've hit the, the big time. Yeah, that, that is the hardest one to get on the New Zealand bird bingos. Yeah, uh, you know. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that whole area is stunning. Boardwalks over, over a beautiful lagoon. Why not check it out? Okay, so speaking about uh, wildlife, what about uh, checking out kiwi birds, another elusive bird of New Zealand. Uh, so located in French Joseph Glacier, there is the West Coast Wildlife Center. And there you'll be able to see uh, some amazing kiwi birds where they are spending uh, some uh, some time kind of reproducing. So basically it's like a shag box for kiwi birds. But it's worth checking out because it's a great conservation effort. And, and no, you won't see them doing naughty things. They're usually busy eating. Uh, next up, <laughs> uh, next up is kayaking on Lake Maparika with uh, Franz Joseph Wilderness Tours. Uh, not only do they provide awesome kayaking tours on a really super reflective lake, which has amazing photo opportunities, but they also do boat tours, fishing on the lake as well. So lots of different experiences there. All right, uh, Sherry was asking us to write down the name of the wetland, yeah. and I uh, wrote it down and gave you a doc link to the exact wow. kind of a spot for you. Amazing uh, so, service, Robin. Yeah, I know. Look at that. <laughs> it's in the live chat right now, and Fabio is back. Cool. Thanks. There you go. Hi, Fabio. Yeah. Um, so we are. We have obviously a, a big list of uh, of things to do in French Zep Glacier located on nzpocketguide.com. There is links in the description of this video, of course. And if it happens to be raining in, uh, you know, in France, Joseph, which you know it probably will at some point, uh, you still have access to two different hot pools location. One art gallery, a greenstone and art gallery called the Tekoha Gallery. And you can also carve your own greenstone there as yes. well. Yes. And you can also do some quiet bike tours. 
duo because Quiet Bike is much more fun in the mud and the rain. Yeah. So here you go. So that wraps up kind of everything that there is to do in uh, French Joseph Glacier. Again, if you are looking for a recommendation, I recommend French Joseph Wilderness Tours. They're pretty good people and they do like a lot of different activities there, um, especially the Glacier Kayak. There is a video of us doing it. Man, I do love it. And also they are do mountain biking uh, as well around the area. Yeah, they do. I didn't know they, that. They just it's got, sort of introduced it last year. They started doing like bike rentals and that sort of thing. So if you want to check out some of the bike trails on the West Coast, then that's a good place to hire from. And Sherry's asking, is it safe to do the terminal walk face in the rain? Um, ma mainly, yes, I'd say. Um, you, uh, you know, uh, you, at some sections you are under like sheer rock faces. But it's best to just keep on walking. Don't linger anywhere too long. Um, but otherwise, there hasn't been any... Uh, I don't think there's been any accidents. They just usually have, like, warning signs to be, like, rockfall area, which is obviously more prone in wet weather. So just make sure that you are, you know, keeping an eye on things, walking, keep on moving, and you should be fine. Yeah, you should be fine. <laughs> uh, Fabio says, you should support that high service from Robin with a Patreon membership, guys. <laughs> Sherry is already a Patreon. We'll love it. Um, and she says, for the price of a big coffee from a company with a star, you get a lot of stuff. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Uh, is it a star that logo? Is it a mermaid? I thought that was a mermaid. Oh, Starbucks. Oh, duh. Sorry, sorry. I was being really dumb. <laughs> so with the star, it's like the star is in the name. The, yeah. <laughs> I was like, is the logo star of Starbucks? No, 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 it's a mermaid. Yeah. We don't have that many Starbucks here in uh, in New Zealand. Just uh, just so you guys know, we have like a, you know, only a handful. So it's not on every corner of every street like it is in Canada and in the US, or at least from my experience. Yeah. You guys have a lot of Starbucks. You guys have <laughs> a lot of it. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the Fox Glacier. So we covered enough about uh, uh, the, you know, the beautiful uh, French Joseph Glacier. We're going to move on to Fox Glacier right now. So uh, yeah, we're going to keep on talking about all the glaciers. But again, if you do have any other uh, questions about, uh, about traveling in New Zealand, just go nuts. Um, Sherry says Fabio should be the official promoter. Yeah, we should give him a title. Um, and Fabio also said the mermaid has a star on the crown. Ooh. Wow. Oh, I mean, also promoting Starbucks wow. very well yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> For all your promotion needs. Star <laughs> Starbucks has a new marketing manager in Fabio. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's talk about Fox Glacier now. Laura, would you like to run uh, down some of the best things to do in Fox Glacier for us? Okay. Well, an obvious place to start is heli hiking. There is one uh, heli hiking company that goes onto Fox Glacier, which is Fox Glacier Guiding. Uh, getting to see lots of awesome ice caves, that sort of thing. Uh, the, the way that the valley is with that bend in the valley means that there's lots of different ice caves that are constantly changing. No tour talk. No two tours are the same. So um, yeah, it, it will probably be, probably be a good one nonetheless. Uh, next up, you have the views of Lake Matterson. So this is um, a sort of the typical postcard photo that you get from New Zealand, where you see beautiful reflections of the mountains and the forest surrounding a really reflective lake. And that is Lake Matterson. So there is a short walk. It takes about two hours to do the entire loop track, or you could go to the main viewpoint and back in a bit of a shorter time. Um, beautiful forest, so that is a really good option to do near Fox Glacier. Another really awesome thing to do in the area is to go to Gillespie's Beach. So you're on the west coast, which is the best place to see the sunset in New Zealand. So if you're staying in Fox Glacier overnight, you should definitely take the short trip over to Gillespie's Beach and lap up those amazing views. Um, another really cool thing to do is the Fox Glacier Southside Walkway slash Cycleway because you can also take your bike down there. And that's a way to see the Fox Glacier in the distance, um, in the distance and do a two hour return hike of the area. Uh, next up is to do a helicopter tour of the Fox Glacier. So you don't have to do the whole heli hiking thing. You can actually take a scenic tour over the Fox Glacier and even land on Fox Glacier. And there's often combos to do that landing on Fox Glacier, then flying over Franz Joseph Glacier and doing a landing there as well. So that's another exciting way to experience both glaciers. 
for a long hike if you you know if you're an experienced hiker and you even want to stay um, in a dock hut overnight then you can do the Copland track which starts from the Fox Glacier area and that takes you to some beautiful um, hot pools where you can go and bathe in the hot pools and stay in a Department of Conservation hut overnight. There's also the uh, amazing forests of the Fox Glacier area where you can do so many different hiking trails such as the Moraine Walk which takes about 40 minutes return and there's also the uh, sorry for the pronunciation but the Minnehaha uh, 20 minute loop walk so yeah there's really um, just that whole area has beautiful rainforest which shouldn't be neglected when you're experiencing the area although the glacier takes all the limelight there's beautiful rainforest in that area too to explore. All right, so there is indeed a lot to do on a Fox Glacier if you guys are uh, keen to explore this amazing area. Um, and yeah, again, it is really located super close to Francis of Glacier. However, because there are different valleys, uh, you can experience very different weather between one and the other. So if you are stuck with really terrible weather in Franz Josef, it is definitely worth inquiring if the weather is better in Fox Glacier and heading that way. That said, remember that the settlement is much smaller. So there is a smaller amount of companies doing everything. There's only one company doing the heli hike, for example. And uh, But yeah, there's really a lot of different awesome things to do there. And the Copeland track is really fun to do if you are prepared for a whole day. You're hike. ready for an adventure. Yeah. All right. Clay uh, has something to say about the Copland track. He says the hot spring on the side of the road to Fox is just a puddle, basically. Sometimes it's the small thing. <laughs> I wouldn't Thank say you, it's Claire. exactly on the side of the road, yeah. but yeah, but yeah. I mean, it just takes a few hours hike to get there. And, and yeah. Fabio was adding that the heli hike is about 400 New Zealand dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it, it is definitely not uh, a cheap activity, but it's uh, no. one is in a lifetime experience, not something you will do multiple times. Um, I mean, we are the lucky exception as we kind of test and trial all those kind of tools for you guys. But yeah, no, we do understand that it is an expensive thing. And uh, that's why we give you a lot of other options. And, and we spend a lot of time talking about And free about ways to check out the glaciers as well. Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, Fabio is really happy that Clay is back. All right, so uh, we know, uh, I mean, you guys know that now I like to add a few extra little segments uh, to our uh, show. And so here is the segment for today. That's right. Uh, so uh, when there is a comment that would kind of match the theme of this week, um, I will pick, uh, you know, it and we will go over this one. So this week I decided to pick a comment from about five months ago from a lovely lady called Ali Cat um, that is asking. She asks, great video. Thanks for sharing. It seems like Fox heli hike has only two timings a day, i.e. 8.50 a.m. and 11.50 a.m. Does it mean that the weather is no good at both time? If it's no good at both timings, I will not be able to do the hike for the rest of the day. I.e. say, even if the weather turns out to be good at 2 p.m., there is no flight going up at that timing to compensate for the earlier cancellation. All right. So, um... Yes and no, right? So one of the things that you need to be aware of is that uh, being stranded on a glacier with terrible weather at night is really no good. And there is no company that's ever going to risk nowhere near doing that. So actually 2 p.m. we cannot, would kind of be a cutoff for one of, those, uh, one of those tools, right? So yeah, they may kind of do a, a, a later departure in order to kind of compensate to try to help people. And obviously it's in their best interest to do that as they are, they want to get people back on the glacier. So yes, for sure, they will try to kind of like, you know, move the, the, the tools a little bit later or sometimes on the next day, they will run the tour a little bit earlier, but they will not take a risk of taking you later on in the afternoon if there is nowhere near a risk of that not, them not being able to come and pick you back up because it's not about the, the, the weather being able to kind of get there. Yes, it is important, but it's also being able to take you back off the glacier. And, uh, you know, when I look at the, the kind of the weather condition, they look at the entirety 
quality of a tour. They wouldn't be just looking at, okay, at, uh, you know, 2 o'clock, it's going to be good weather, and then it's getting terrible at 3. What if it's getting terrible at 3? The tour is two hours, so there is no way they can come pick you back up, and then at that point, they, they, they won't. So I obviously did already answer Ali Kat's question in writing when she did ask the questions five months ago. It didn't take me five months to answer the question, but uh, I thought that it was such a relevant question. Um, ask on, 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 you know, one of the videos, as you can see just, just below me right now. Uh, you can see the thumbnail of which video it is. So it's one of our videos doing um, the Fox Glacier, uh, Joseph Glacier, sorry. Um, and <laughs> Fo Fo Fox Fox Glacier. Girl, why do I keep doing this mistake? <laughs> the Fox Glacier right here. It's a mashup of glaciers. Yeah. All the glaciers together. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so yeah, so I already answered that to her, but I thought I'd pull back this comment. Uh, I'll pull it back up again, just to make sure that you guys um, are able to get this answer. So here you go. Um, yeah. All right. And if you do have any questions of your own people, you can put them in the comment section of any of our YouTube videos. Maybe one day it will be picked five months later <laughs> to be featured on the live show. Maybe we'll be picked back up much earlier. Come on. <laughs> and I always answer the questions anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Fabio says he, he included uh, the heli hike on his itinerary as it is must do, even if it's a little pricey. It is definitely is pricey for sure. Um and uh, yeah, Clay and, uh, and Fabio are trying to reach out to each other so they can catch up in Dunedin. Maybe that will happen. Um, yeah, all right, uh, moving on. What else were we talking about? Uh, yes, okay, there is a French backpacker traveling around New Zealand. I almost forgot about Armand. Yeah. Okay, so um, Armand's uh, epic gap year of New Zealand. I can't remember the name of it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I am wow, completely great, out of in, great intro. So Armand, French backpacker uh, to, in New Zealand, is keeping a log of everything, all the exciting things he's doing every single week during his working holiday. So uh, this week, we have a little bit of a rainy episode for you guys, so enjoy. Hey guys, this is Armand reporting from Auckland on the 18th week of my working holiday in New Zealand. So as you guys know, we've had uh, on and off rainfalls for the past few days and uh, I believe the state of emergency is actually ongoing in Auckland. Interestingly, I noticed that Google Maps has added the flood uh, and uh, there is some information on uh, Google Maps regarding the situation and some updates. Uh, there is some briefings, I believe, every morning by the uh, cabinet, the government, about the situation. And uh, I think that uh, we need a couple of consecutive days of, uh, without any rain for the soil to desaturate because there are still some fragile infrastructure and uh, some roads are closed and um, it's uh, been improving, hope, uh, thankfully. But uh, yeah, there are uh, some landslides, especially in the southern parts of uh, Auckland and uh, in the North Shore. Thankfully, I'm very fortunate because my flat is in uh, the CBD in Queen Street and uh, I live on the seventh floor. Not all my colleagues have been as fortunate and there has been some significant damage done to their uh, belongings and um, the uh, apartments. Uh, that aside, I decided to postpone my trip to uh, the Northland, uh, to Pahia and Cape uh, Ringa to a uh, later time because I figured that if I'm paying that much for the skydive, scuba diving and uh, perhaps some whale watching, I want it to be as good as it can get, you know. And I'm going to be in Auckland for a couple of more weeks, if not months anyway, so uh, yeah, the weather has, is bound to turn at some point, right? Like I cannot imagine it being like this uh, uh, forever. Uh, I believe it's, this is the uh, darkest uh, uh, January we had uh, since uh, 1989. Um, that's uh, something I read, I believe, uh, in the uh, newspapers. So it's quite uh, peculiar and uh, unprecedented. This is not how, uh, according to even the locals to whom I've spoken, this is not how it usually is during that time of year, you know. But yeah, it is what it is and uh, thankfully this weekend is also a long weekend thanks to uh, Waitangi Day on Monday, which is um, a public holiday. 
so I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, do some uh, exhibitions and uh, yeah, explore uh, the uh, indoors uh, activities and maybe go to the uh, Sea Life, uh, Kelly Tartland, you know, those, that kind of, those kinds of uh, things that I um, uh, haven't done yet. Uh, other than that, I did learn a couple of days ago that I can actually get half an hour of uh, more sleep by um, taking the train instead of the bus to work. Uh, so now I'm taking the train from Britomart, either the southern line or the uh, eastern. And it does uh, make me save up quite a bit of commute. That way I can um, get some extra sleep, which is quite uh, neat. Um, yeah, I think that wraps it up for this week, folks. Uh, until next week, take care. All right. Well, that's a, that's a fun commute. I enjoy I enjoyed the train. Hey, yeah. That, it's uh, well, as Fabio said, uh, CityLink in action. So yeah. yeah, great to see some of the Auckland transport doing its thing. But yeah, another another rainy uh, rainy week in New Zealand's biggest urban jungle. Yes, and and we are preparing ourselves again for uh, for for Cyclone Gabriel this time. So yeah, just uh, fun time. Fun times with the weather at the moment. Hope, anyway, hope Gabs is kind to us. Gabs. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's continue with our coverage of the New Zealand glacier. Let's now move on to the Mount Cook area, which is home to New Zealand's longest glacier, the Tasman Glacier, which is quite epic. So, um, as per with French Joseph Glacier, we're going to start with some common questions that we got asked about, uh, you know, beautiful Mount Cook area. And let's start with... Is it worth visiting Mount Cook, Laura? Ah, uh, yes. I think I'm just going to always say that uh, for this question. But yes, of course, it is definitely worth visiting not only to see uh, the longest glacier in New Zealand, which is the Tasman Glacier, but there's many amazing mountain landscapes in the area, beautiful hikes and uh, beautiful experiences all around. Okay, so how many days do you think it will take to have a good experience in Mount Cook, to be able to see and do everything that you want in the Mount Cook area, in, in your expert opinion? Oh, yes. Well, in my expert opinion, I think two days is a, a good sort of minimum amount of time to spend in Mount Cook, which gives you opportunity to do some of the hiking trails, perhaps do a heli hike on the glacier, maybe do some kayaking, and there's... Uh, even stargazing tours that you can do in Mount Cook as well. So two days is definitely my recommended amount of time to spend in Mount Cook. All right, so let's move on to, obviously a burger right here, fun times. Let's move on to, uh, where is Mount Cook located? Laura, do you want to show us on the map? Sure. All right, so Mount Cook is located about a four hours drive away from Christchurch, about a three hours drive away from Queenstown, and about an hour and 10 minutes uh, away from Lake Tikapo. And it's located to where Laura is pointing right now. Here you go. She's ready. Uh, nice one. Now, how to get to Mount Cook? It is connected to pretty much the rest of New Zealand through State Highway 80 and State Highway 8. The closest international airport uh, to Mount Cook is going to be the Queenstown Airport. But still, as mentioned, it's about three hours drive away um, and there is also a domestic flight from Auckland uh, and Wellington in Christchurch uh, to go all the way to Queenstown and then drive the three hours to get to Mount Cook. Uh, however, Mount Cook is on all of the main bus routes. It's just always kind of like it's a one way in, one way out. So you've got to kind of make your way straight to Mount Cook all the time. All right, as Laura is coming back right now, we are going to go over, uh, you know, driving to Wan Man Cook. And one of the main questions that we get when it comes down to the drive to Wan Man Cook, Laura, is do you need snow chain in order to be able to go to Mount Cook? Uh, in most instances, like about 99% of the time, no, you do not need snow chains to go to Mount Cook. The drive is on a, a piece of road that doesn't usually get snow. Um, so, yeah, usually you're totally fine. But uh, during winter, between usually between June and August, there are the odd times where the snow does fall onto the road. So if you are planning on traveling during those winter months, just make sure you check on the NZ Transport Agency's website for updates on that road. And finally, Laura, tell us about the weather on beautiful Mount Cook and over the stunning Tasman Glacier. 
So the weather in that area, it's usually pretty chilly. You are going up into the uh, into a uh, high altitude into the mountains. So it's usually the, av the daily average temperature is 8.6 degrees Celsius. So in Fahrenheit, that is 47.5. And as for the rainfall, it is for the yearly average, it's around 3,656 millimeters. So in inches, that's one, uh, 143.9 inches. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of like your quick rundown of uh, the beautiful Mount Cook area. Uh, you know, when it comes down to like the most popular questions that we get, we'll go back to live chat and then we'll t tell you our favorite things to do in Mount Cook very shortly. Uh, so, uh, Fabio is asking, is there any possibility to go on a guided hike to Araki Mount Cook? Now, asking for myself, I don't talk a lot about hiking usually. So, guided hike all the way to New Zealand's top uh, to tallest mountain. Yeah, so there are guided, more like expeditions, because you are going to, you are essentially mountaineering to go yeah. up and um, it's, out... it's basically not a hike anymore, right? No, it's, yeah, yeah. it's um, so going up Araki Mount Cook, uh, you do need to have all the gear, um, which, you know, uh, guided tour in the area can provide you with all the gear like crampons, ropes, safety equipment, all that sort of stuff. But it's not just something that anyone can just do during a day. It's usually a multi-day experience where you'll spend the first day sort of training, do get you know, you, learning how to use all the gear, getting to the the starting point, which is usually um, at the uh, I forget I forget the name of the red hut now. There's a Muller hut. Yeah, the Muller hut. So starting from there. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you do the sort of first walk up to that area and then you sort of start the next day from there going up nice and early, yeah. using all the right gear to get up there. So, yeah. And you're uh, just pointing out as well as... You know, we were talking about doing the heli hike was about four hundred New Zealand dollars, right? We're talking thousand. Depending on the size of the parties, it's thousand, a thousand, much thousand more dollars. expensive. Yeah, it's yeah. extremely expensive to do. Yeah, uh, Robert Laliberte has a question. Nothing to do with French Joseph, but I like it. And he says, I often find myself comparing the prices of things in New Zealand with the cost at home. He is from Canada. Mm -hmm. he says this leads me to wonder: Is there anything in New Zealand that costs less than what you would get elsewhere? Nope. Um, pretty much all yeah. the time. No, genuinely, like, um, uh, you know, I'm originally from France and I've had some friends from France that show me the price of New Zealand lamb in French supermarkets. It's cheaper than New Zealand lamb in New Zealand supermarkets. So, no, I, I, the cost of life in New Zealand is absolutely ludicrous at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it is quite hard to make ends meet uh, uh, quite often in New Zealand. It is, it is I mean, tough, you, high cost of living, for sure. There's a few things that you can get for free if you're real savvy enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you can go fish for your own trout. And, uh, you can yeah. go fishing. You can go and, you know, forage the local fruit trees because yeah. fruit trees grow really well in New Zealand. Yeah. And, uh, well, horse poo is always available oh, for yeah. free on the side of the road. Yeah, there's always a bag of horse poo on the side of the road if People you need it to fertilize your garden. People always have signs up saying, horse poo, free, like, on the side of the road. So, yeah. you know... Yep, there you go. There's those things. Sherry is <laughs> suggesting manuka honey. Yeah, I don't know the price of manuka honey elsewhere, but it's really expensive in New Zealand already. Yeah, like, you know, exact... we're talking about like a yeah. 250 grams jar is about like $40. So, yeah, it's it gets quite expensive. Um, yeah, if you get like pure manuka honey, if you get blends, it's much cheaper. Yeah. Michael Stewart is here saying he's late. That's a good comment. I like it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thanks for joining us anyway. It doesn't matter go. what time you show up. You can always rewind. Uh, you can see us having a bl bit of a blunder at the start with the microphones not working, yeah. but you can always rewind and check out. I need two blunders show. today. Blunders with the microphone at the start, which I don't know what happened because I was prepared. And uh, what's the other blunder? Oh, yeah, we had uh, Armand replaying again one more time because I cannot get used to that. <laughs> I need to put myself a list of notes. Maybe I'll do that. You need um, to spread out all the buttons on the keyboard. Is there such a keyboard where no, you can I need have 20 like different keyboards. <laughs> pressing buttons in various <laughs> different areas so you don't accidentally skip, like lean on one? Um, Clay. Clay says, I was going to sign up to do the course to be able to go up uh, to Mount Cook. He's talking. And then I read the book in the museum and I thought that I have a lot more life. <laughs> <laughs> Not yes, more to live. Is, yeah, a lot more to live for than uh, good yeah. doing that. Yeah, it is. It is relatively dangerous, and actually, some people have some pretty bad accidents. I mean, you know, like kind of pretty bad accident uh, going up there. So yeah, no, it is. It is. It is definitely an adventure. All right. So before we wrap up this show about uh, you know all the news in Glacier, we thought we'd tell you about the top experiences to do in Mount Cook. At least really quickly, Laura, what's your favorite thing to do in Mount Cook? Uh, 
Oh, is this a leading question or should I just say? Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, the hook. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. He's the third blunder of the day. <laughs> uh, I think the number one thing to do is the Hooker Valley track, which actually takes you to see the view of a different glacier. Um, so, yeah, don't have to see the Tasman Glacier. There's other glaciers to see, and the Tasman Valley track, uh, sorry, the Hooker Valley track will take you to that. One really unique thing to do in Mount Cook is to actually land on top of the glacier with a ski plane. Uh, taking the ski plane in Mount Cook is a very interesting and unique experience, and you can see us doing that on the channel, so check that out. Another thing to do is to do glacier heli hiking. Yes, you can do that as well with Mount Cook Glacier Guiding and the helicopter line also based in the Mount Cook area. And you land on the Tasman Glacier. Yes. Uh, okay, another uh, cool thing to do is to do a boat tour with Glacier Explorer where you're going to go on the glacier lake in between icebergs and everything. It's a really fun one, uh, fun tour to do. And uh, you will be reminded of the sheer tiny size of your existence compared to the sheer gigantic size of other of nature's elements, mm. i.e. like big, amazing, like glacier face and everything like that. And finally, you can do stargazing in Mount Cook. There are guided stargazing tours where you get to use powerful telescopes or, you know, you're in a dark sky reserve. You can just simply drive a little bit out of the village and look up and enjoy the view on a clear night. All right. Um, cool. Okay, so if it's raining in Mount Cook, which it is at times, obviously, there's a couple of extra things to do. There is the Araki Mount Cook National Park Visitor Center, the Sir Edmund Hillary Alpine Center, and there is a really cool bushwalk completely sheltered under the trees, which is the Governor's Bush Walk. Boom. Okay. Uh, last few comments before we're wrapping up today. Uh, we have Michael that says, what's the worst place you've ever been to in New Zealand? I think it's Auckland. I genuinely hate the traffic in Auckland. I genuinely, genuinely loathe it. The traffic in Auckland is terrible. Can I say it again? Driving around Auckland Central, hell on wheel, especially with an RV. Would you agree or would you have something else? Oh, I can't think of anything else. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fabio <laughs> says uh, it's quite comparable to Mat Matterhorn in Switzerland. Both expedition hike are a beauty. Okay. So that's climbing all the way to Mount Cook, I guess. Mm, nice. Uh, Sherry says, can you see much ice and snow on the Hooker Valley track in October? Uh, so you can see them in the surrounding mountains. So not necess not definitely not in the valley, like usually not in the valley where you're walking. But yeah, in the even when you get to the end, when you get to the uh, glacier lake, you'll see some some ice sometimes in the lake and at the glacier beyond. Uh, Michael Stewart is uh, going to join us earlier next time. Nice one. Cool. <laughs> We look forward Eager to it. Eager to see you then. Yeah. And Kevin Rigo says, Hey, so I will be arriving in New Zealand on the 17th for the first time. Could you share me some tips I need to prepare when I reach the Auckland airport? Uh, all right. So first up, have a suitcase that is uh, bright and colorful because every suitcase is always dark and so it's hard to find yours on the cover of your belt. Uh, get all your paperwork at the ready and have everything printed. So when you arrive in, uh, you know, immigration, uh, you'll, you'll be able to go through all that really, really easily. So so have everything printed out, ready to go, and have your phone charged in case you need to show something to do with your NZDTA. Uh, when it comes down to biosecurity, make sure that you declare anything you may have a doubt with. Declare, 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 so you avoid a $400 fine. Plus, if you do plan to bring any food into New Zealand, well, don't, because most of the food is not allowed in the country. Uh, we do have plenty more tips for you on nzpocketguide.com. And as Fabio will say, you can join us on Patreon. We have literally another hour of that when we can talk about things a little bit more like you know in detail yeah more in detail you know it's the patreon session there's no filter it's kind of like uh you know it's just a bit more kind open of open all access yes uh so yeah so you can join us on patreon if you want aside from that make sure that you prepare yourself for the flight and make sure that you are uh you know you are getting yourself some extra layers as when you may land in new zealand maybe extremely different weather than what you used to so make sure that you're ready for the flight Good all right so that's that those are really really quick kevin just because well you literally arrive when the live show is finishing right now as you can see on the timestamp, we've been live for an hour and so we do a one hour live show publicly and then a one hour live show for the patreon so you arrive literally when we're closing in uh ideal says suggestion let's watch armand video at the beginning of the last stream um then we can focus on the topic of the day and not worry about it yeah that's a good suggestion i just like to have a break in between and also that allows laura and i to be able to have a glass of water as we talk like non-stop for a whole hour so yeah but um yeah that's a good suggestion i just yeah it yeah um yeah 
Yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Clay says, Adil, surely it is strategically placed to whip out for a quick fix and lead break, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's basically what we thought we'd do. And usually we always do it at the end because we always forget and we kind of dive into the subject and everything. So I'm trying to go back more to like around the middle of the show in order to, uh, to, to, to do that. that. That's usually what I'm trying to achieve usually, but yeah. Uh, and finally, we have Fabio that says, don't forget to like. Oh, yeah, the, the producer Do right here. So he's what? Marketing <laughs> manager, producer. How many other jobs that Fabio have I right know. here for us? That's, that's amazing. Okay, so that wraps up this live show of the day. As Adil would ask, Laura, what is the theme for next week? The theme for next week is, oh, my gosh. It's oh, working, working holiday. holiday. <laughs> oh, so that. Give me a high five on that. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, the theme of the next week is going to be all about the working holiday visa. So if you're planning on taking gap year in New Zealand and think that the backpacking in New Zealand and getting a job along the way, all that kind of shenanigans is for you. Maybe just tune in and you'll uh, get plenty of tips from us about uh, about all that. So yeah, we'll see you next week. In the meantime, we are heading to a one hour live show with Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting us, guys. Have a lovely week. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you next week.